Let us pray. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our mouths to speak your truth and to declare your love to a world that desperately needs it. For the sake of the King Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but if someone comes at me out of the blue saying really nice things about me, I am immediately suspicious of their motives. When the messenger of God, Gabriel, appears out of thin air to Mary, saying some really awesome things about her, she's rightly perplexed and raises her eyebrow quietly and wonders, What? Who, me? Realistically, in her day, from the world's point of view, Mary was one of the least significant people on the planet. A complete and utter nobody. Not only is she from a nation beaten into submission by the might of Rome, she is from a nothing country town. Her family is poor, the bloke she is engaged to is poor, and she is a young woman in a man's world. Sons were prized, daughters were seen as a costly burden to be rid of as soon as possible through marriage. Mary's life is unimportant in every possible way in the big scheme of things. At least that's what she would think. Yet here's the problem. There's a messenger from God in her room. Gabriel, greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. Speaking to her of all the people on earth, do, that all, all the people on the earth do dwell, and telling her of God's plan to work through her to rescue not only her nation, but the entire world forever. She rightly asks, well, how does that work? Gabriel replies, the power of the Holy Spirit will work through you to give birth to the world's future, its true king, Jesus. Now, Mary was no dill. Unmarried teenage girl gets pregnant. These days, that sort of news would hardly cause a stir. It might make a few people roll their eyes and say, well, of course, water's wet. What's new? But 2,000 years ago in the nation of the Jews, it was against the law and it was deadly serious. It could mean that she would be run out of town, never to return, having to live on the streets, doing whatever it takes to make a living for her, and for a kid, if she chose to keep it. It could mean an angry mob dragging you out of town by your hair and stoning you to death. To be carrying the child who is not only the true king of Israel, but all of the world, well, that's probably going to put you in the crosshairs of some very powerful people who don't want their positions to be threatened. Mary's life would be in danger straight out of the gate. What blows me away is that there's no hesitation in Mary's response. Here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. There are lots of men in the scriptures who were incredible, yet there are plenty who, when asked by God to do a hard thing, doubt him, question him, cower in fear, do their level best to run away from doing his will. Kings, combat veterans, hardy blue collar workers, prophets and even priests like Zechariah earlier in chapter one of Luke's gospel. But not this young woman. There is no doubt in her. Just curiosity about oh, how's it going to work. There's no hesitation, only affirmation. Here I am. Let's do it. Is it any wonder then that 33 years later, when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing that God the Father was asking him to lay his life down for the salvation and future of humanity, to die and rise again, that Jesus, kneeling in the garden, prayed very similar words to that of his courageous mum all those years before. She must have told him again and again, because there he was, sweating drops of blood. If you are willing, let this cup pass from me, but not my will but yours be done. Virtually the same prayer. If God will work in and through someone like Mary, take a nobody like her and make a somebody, take her from being a zero to a hero, then don't think that he won't do the same for you. 
All you have to pray is, here I am. You may believe, you may have convinced yourself that you are utterly unimportant and of no account and nobody in the big scheme of the world. That's probably a right and sober judgment. Good. Because you're now ready. You're just the person God's messenger is looking for, has been sent to find and to call out. He is calling you out of your ordinary life tonight to make it meaningful, to make it matter. He is daring you to risk danger, risk it all, to work with him to rescue this community of Marupna, this country and this world. If you're turning on the TV and saying, how can these things be? Well, then you are the man, you are the woman, you are the child to make a difference. He is calling you out tonight, he's daring you to risk it all. And you're right to ask, how can this be? He has promised his own power, the power of the Holy Spirit who will overshadow your life and make all things possible through him. So why do you doubt you of little faith? That same power is promised to you that brought the universe into being, that called something out of nothing, that created molecules to magnetize from particles to people. The same power that through Mary brought to birth the word of God incarnate. The same power that flowed through King Jesus to heal and make whole, to cast out demons, to announce good news, to walk on water, forgive sins, and even raise the dead. The same power that flowed through King Jesus when he rose from the dead on the third day. The same power that through the apostles and others brought the church to birth, doing the very same things that he did, only greater in the most ferocious opposition and the greatest of danger. The same power that has flowed through the church to transform the world for 2,000 years for the glory of God, to make it livable. The spirit of Christmas is the Holy Spirit. And if you ain't got him, you've got nothing. Want a piece of that action? I guarantee you that whatever you've got put under that Christmas tree for you tomorrow or for others, it's nothing compared to what God can give you this Christmas to give the world through you if you'll let him. If you'll say, here I am. All you have to pray is, here I am. The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Don't be surprised at what he'll do. The angel of the Lord says to you tonight, greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. For you have found favour with God. Amen. Let us pray.